What type of flange and gasket do I use for FRP piping and tanks? Hi, I'm Dave Chapman, Sales and Service Manager for RPS Composites. Flanges and gaskets in plastic piping can be a complicated subject, so here's the Coles notes on FRP pipe and tank flanges. Choosing the wrong type of flange or the improper flange installation are two of the leading problems for FRP pipe and tanks. So first off, let's take a minute to look at the flange construction method. Generally speaking, there are two methods for making FRP flanges. Integrally molded or contact molded on a pipe stub. An integrally molded flange is made directly on the flange mold. So the flange face and hub are one piece. The operator applies the surfacing veil directly to the flange mold. They roll it out, apply the chop strand mat layers and woven roving layers if there were any. They take it off, trim off the flashing, drill the flange and you have a one piece solid FRP flange. A flange on pipe stub is a little different. First, I slide a tapered piece of pipe down over my flange mold. I apply the liner material up and onto the tapered pipe stub. In this case, it's an abrasion resistant liner. That's why it's green. You apply the structural layers, you roll it out, and you have a flange on pipe stub. Note the top of the flange is actually the original pipe stub I slid down over the mold. Both integrally molded and flange on pipe work well. Some customers like integrally molded because it's a one piece construction, but it'll cost you about 30% extra. In addition, the flange might be plain ended for a butt joint system, or it might be bell ended for an adhesive joint system. Both systems can work well. Check out our webinar on butt joint versus adhesive joints to learn more about this subject. Once you've chosen if you want an integral flange or flange on pipe, you'll need to figure out what type of FRP flange you need. There are basically two types of FRP flanges, full face and lap joint. Full face FRP flanges are all FRP right to the flange OD, complete with the bolt holes. A full face FRP flange has to be bolted to a flat face. You shouldn't bolt a full face FRP flange to any type of raised face. And the full face FRP flange doesn't offer any kind of adjustment, so it has to be bolted up stress-free. You can't draw or pull it in place like you might do with a steel flange. Here's some examples of valves that work well with full face FRP flanges. Note the linings go right to the OD of the valve. What about these valves? These valves won't work well with a full face FRP flange. If a full face FRP flange is bolted to this valve, it's going to be unsupported around the bolt holes. And when the flange is torqued up, it's going to want to bend into those unsupported areas. And that will likely lead to cracking of the FRP flange hub. The solution in this case is to use a lap joint style FRP flange. This is the other type of flange I was talking about. A lap joint FRP flange only the hub is FRP. The bolts go through a metallic backing ring. The backing ring can be galvanized, epoxy painted, alloy, or in some cases FRP is used for the backing ring as well. The backing ring isn't standard though. The ID needs to match the OD of the FRP flange. At RPS we normally used an A105 forge flange we machine off the hub and the raised face, open it up to the required ID, and then have it galvanized or painted. Sometimes it's difficult to tell if the mating equipment has a true flat face, especially if you only have a cut sheet. The safe bet is to use a lap joint style FRP flange when in doubt, as long as it's compatible with your valve or equipment. When bolting to an expansion joint, a little extra thought is required. Often, expansion joints use tie rods or control rods to limit expansion. When the pressure thrust comes onto the control rods, the load will be locally applied to the mating FRP flange. This will likely lead to problems with the FRP flange. 
that is not ductile and doesn't like concentrated loads. The solution is to slide a steel ring behind the FRP flange to distribute the load. Just make sure the FRP flange has been back face flat in order to accept the ring. And the ring is basically the same ring used for a lap joint flange, although the ID may be slightly different. What about gaskets for FRP pipe and tanks? Well, if it's compatible with your environment, the safest bet is to use a full face, EPDM, 8 inch thick, 60 to 70 durometer gasket for both lap joint and full face flanges. Sometimes your environment requires a more chemically resistant gasket. The Garlock Stress Saver XP or equivalent blended fluoroelastomer gasket has been proven to work well with FRP flanges and it might be compatible with your environment. Garlock Stress Saver 370 and 3504 are also generally suitable for FRP flanges and offer improved chemical resistance. If you're considering using some other materials like Gylon or other fluoropolymers, it's best to check with RPS to ensure the gasket is compatible with FRP and what, if any, special requirements are needed. One thing to note is, whatever gasket you use, it's likely to have a low seating stress in the range of 600 PSI. So make sure the bolt torque matches the gasket and the FRP flange. It may be much lower than you're used to, and over-torquing FRP flanges can lead to serious problems. On RPS flanges, the recommended bolt torque is written on the side of the flange. Don't exceed 1.5 times this value. The RPS recommended bolt torque is for a lubricated bolt. You may not get a good seal if the bolt is not lubricated. For Teflon coated bolts, the recommended bolt torque needs to be slightly lower. Check with RPS for recommendations. If you've chosen a low torque gasket like the Garlock Stress Saver XP or equivalent, you need to ensure the FRP flange face is compatible. Some FRP flanges come with raised sealing ribs, and these can interfere with the sealing ribs on the gasket. Always specify a flat face FRP flange when using low torque gaskets. If you can use that standard flat EPDM gasket, then the sealing ribs on the FRP flange are a good idea and you should use them. It'll help you get a good seal. That may be a little confusing, so let me just reiterate. If you've got a flat gasket, you can use the sealing ribs on an FRP flange, although it's not absolutely necessary. If you have a ribbed gasket, you should use a flat face FRP flange. So in conclusion, always use a lap joint flange when you're bolting to any kind of raised face. If you're not sure about the flange face, again, use an FRP lap joint style flange as long as it's compatible with the valve or equipment. Make sure your gasket is full face and it's compatible with FRP flanges. Again, EPDM is your safest choice for FRP. If you're using a low torque gasket that has those sealing ribs on the gasket, make sure your FRP flange face has no sealing ribs, i.e. it's flat faced. Make sure you're using the proper bolt torque. If it's not listed on the flange, check with your supplier. And finally, when you're bolting an FRP flange to an expansion joint, use that steel ring behind the FRP flange if there are control rods. And hey, if you have any more questions, visit rpscomposites.com Email us at advisor at rpscomposites.com or give us a call.